Welcome to part six. This is our final episode. We're going to take a look at the tall fire axiom setup, the mid fire axiom setup, how they were spread around the scene to actually finalize our composition. And then that's it for this series. I hope you find it useful and thank you for watching. All right, let's continue with the tall fire setup. Uh, all of this is exactly the same as here, so I will not cover that and you will get the hip file anyway so you can check it, but it's literally a copy paste and you can see everything that's in the green here, uh, they're the same setups and everything that's orange, uh, it's also the same copy pasted. And everything in the orange are the embers, which unfortunately I will not cover today, but I am planning on doing a future tutorial on them. Uh, so the embers were created by Sergio at Hydra Studio and he's an absolute madman and he created his own pop solver for uh, Sims. And I mean, it's a lot. Uh, maybe someday we might cover this, how to make it, but just use a pop <laughs> pop solver for now. Um, yeah, let's go to the volume effects template so and see how the fires were made. Pretty simple, pretty simple. So we have a circle and then here in the repeat uh, block in the for each block, we can just decide how much, how many times are we iterating over uh, what's inside of here. And inside of here, it's literally just a attribute noise. So the more the more we the more iterations we do, the more noise will get applied. This is just a simple way of you know creating your emitters. But if you don't want it to, you can just all, always just do it like this. You know. Nobody's going to be mad at you. Uh, just do this and you're going to be good. Uh, the only the reason why you would do it here is if you do it inside uh, and you put down a remesh at the beginning, you can see the emitter is going to be getting remeshed all the time based on how our shape is altering here. So uh, if we do it here, that will not be happening. So that's kind of the reason why you would do it in a for loop. All right, the next thing, once we have that, this is just a plane. Essentially, we're going to scatter points with the pyro source, create density, create temperature attributes, and then rasterize them. Hurrah, good stuff. And then we would cache this. Uh, I always cache the emitters, but in this case, because nothing is animated, it's extremely fast. Uh, so Hydra, when they were caching this out, they were calling this tall fire A, and this was called tall fire B. So you can do the same thing if you put down a, oops, a, you know, a file cache, and you just call this tall fire. Come on, don't need to cook anything. Uh, it's bringing in our cache, but yeah, this would be tall fire A, right? And that will be then when you cache it out, that's going to be in your name, just so you you have some organization uh, over your fire versions. But essentially, yeah, everything here is quite straightforward after that. Once we have the emitter, we plug it into uh, Axiom and we just let it cache. You can see it's going to be extremely, extremely fast to cache this out. Uh, granted, we're not caching a lot of voxels, but let's see, what are the speeds for this? So we are caching out uh, 37,000 voxels per frame which is one, two, three, uh, 90 million voxels per second. Just, you know, it's okay. But yeah, it's pretty fast. Pyro bake it. That's how it's going to look. And then we just uh, save it. So when we cache it, it's just going to storm through it. And I'll just stop the cache. But yeah, that's how the fire is going to look. The fire settings, I did cover that in the Axiom Fundamentals, but just in case, you know, nothing special, one disturbance. Uh, we don't even need temperature, so, or sorry, density, so you can either half your density or not export it at all. In a lot of cases, fire does have just a bit of density uh, or smoke to it, so, and also it's good to have smoke and then turn it into, you put it as a black smoke and that will create more of the dark pockets uh, in your fire. It's also a pro tip. Uh, that's it. So you do this for our A emitter and you cache out your B emitter 
and then you just bring them in here. So you can see we just have the density and then the material. And let's see, we go to our smoke. And we put this to a darker smoke. So this is a bit too dark, but I mean too dense. But yeah, you can, if you, sometimes fire can be a bit too transparent, especially if um, it depends on your scene and when, you, where you're rendering it. But sometimes you want to have just a bit of density there to keep the dark black pockets uh, very dark. Otherwise, if it becomes too transparent, uh, it can just be too see-through. But in this case, uh, I think it's fine. That's why usually when you're rendering fire and if you're rendering over black backgrounds, it's not the best because it's going to look great because you, you're you going to see the, the dark spots. You're going to be like, ah, this fire, I love it. And then you put it onto your shot or uh, onto your render and it just becomes almost like transparent. So the more you know. All right, and then uh, we export it as USD, Tallfire USD, bring it in as Tallfire USD, and yeah. Pretty cool. Let's uh, continue down the pipe. So this is all the same. This is bringing in just that uh, Tallfire B, and this is then Midfire, and Midfire has a bit of a different setup. So let me quickly show you that. Uh, so we're in the Midfire setup. And it's pretty much the same as the tall fire with a few alterations. And the logic is very similar. We just create our fire A, B, C, and D. We cache them out. And then in Solaris, we then just merge them all together, retime them, rotate them just a bit, and that will populate our scene. So we're still using the same logic as before with the iterations. So this is essentially a feedback loop. You plug it here, you create your noises and everything and now your iterations are going to be driving how many times this noise is going to get applied if you do it outside you know this is all we have obviously we can just change the amplitude and that would be do something like this so this would be completely valid even without the feedback loop uh, but as you know in houdini oof, you can do something in a lot of uh, different ways even maybe if we just used a remesh here so we get some geometry and then put down a noise, attribute noise, put this to P, zero center, click on this, put this to zero. There we go. That is a completely valid um, emitter. Although the geometry is a bit uh, more messed up than here, but you know, whatever. <laughs> in most cases, that would be enough or good enough. So what we're doing here in the point wop, it's essentially just a kernel noise added to noise up our geometry with a few parameters uh, for the frequency and the offsets and also the axis amount so the axis amount what it's doing is G -g -g axis you know noise is a three-dimensional it's gonna this is a three-dimensional noise so but we honestly we don't want it on the y at all maybe just a bit but uh you know not necessary and then the Element size is just changing how much to noise it up. And then the uh, size is also doing something very similar. So it's up to you. But like I said, just a basic uh, kernel noise and then a few parameters exposed. Then we are creating a edge loop. For some reason, not showing up. Here we go. Edges. And then Hydra, again, they use their own falloff. What you can do is mask. Uh, from geometry and I think if we plug this in and set this to edge and visualize the mask and do on points there we go so this would give you a edge mask and what you can do with this is then multiply when you're rasterizing your fields you can multiply your density and it's just going to soften your edges if we don't do this you know Again, in many cases, it's not going to make a lot of difference, but it will make the edges softer, softer and it's going to give your emitter uh, a bit more realism in this case. So you know the drill. We did everything here before. 
So the only thing left is to simulate this. And we are, again, simulating with Axiom. In this case, uh, we are using just a bit of wind, but that's pretty much it. Everything else is more or less set to the default. Once you cache this, you just bring it in. And um, yeah, Hydra, they have their own proprietary file nodes and uh, ROP nodes. Very fancy stuff, but you know you can just put down a file cache again, and that's going to be completely fine, and it's going to work for uh, most people. OK, for some reason, <laughs> he froze. It's like, nope, not today. OK, so once we have that, we can bring it in again with a volume. You can see that's exactly what we just simulated, and then add the material. And there we go. And then we just repeat the process a few times. So different fire, different emitter, different fire, different emitter. And yeah, do this, merge them. You can also use references uh, instead of merges. Uh, a few people told me that merging with references or merging with a merge will actually change a bit how the uh, underneath the hood, how things work. So using a reference is uh, more cleaner. So, or a, a sub layer. It's going to be a bit more cleaner, but you know, it's going to work. It's fine. Don't worry about it too much. And then, yeah, like I said, we transform them in different locations, merge them again. It's going to get a bit slower. And then we have a bunch of them merged up like this. And then we start merging the other fires together as well. The tall fire. See where that is. There we go. So we have our tall fires in as well. And then we merge everything together uh, with our character. And I disabled the Karma Fog box because it was a bit slow, but essentially it just creates a, a big box of volume uh, for fog. <laughs> I know. And also, one thing that I didn't touch upon was the uh, smoke layer. Kind of looks like this. Just uh, it's going to give you some ambient smoke and also the fire is going to illuminate it and it's going to look pretty cool. And the smoke layer is done the same way. It's the same emitter, so I don't want to cover uh, cover it, but you know, exactly like fire, you make the smoke as well. So once we have that, let's uh, merge everything together. It might take a while. Cool. So that's how the shot looks when everything is together viewed through the camera. Let's see if we can make this a bit brighter. Yeah, I mean, then it goes through comp and color correction and you pretty much get the final render. And yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, I know it might be a bit overwhelming at first to start with Solaris, but I hope this gave you some good pointers on how to start your journey. I think it's a super powerful context once you get used to it. It really speeds up the iteration process, the, the just the way different departments communicate between each other, you know, lighting, compositing, FX, uh, layout. It's, it's really, really nice. And the render times are pretty good. So yeah, I think that's it. Let me know if I missed something. Let me know if there's anything else that you want to see or if you want me to explain something, some concepts in more detail. I'll try and give my best. Uh, big thanks to Ash Torp for creating a super cool story and characters uh, in this short film. Uh, big thanks to Hydra Studios, Debbie, Sergio, uh, and all the other people out there. Thank you so much uh, for this. And yeah, we're just going to continue making awesome content and I hope you guys like it. All right, until next time. Bye.